Hello and welcome to this week's review for Movie Magpies, where we will be looking at the film Paddington. I am your host, Monique, as always, here with my co-host, Will. How about we just get right into it? Okay, I think we should probably start with how we always start, just with a quick summary. So for people who don't know, what is Paddington, Monique? The Netflix summary for Paddington is, Rescued from a train station, Paddington Bear finds a haven with a London family until a taxidermist decides to add Paddington to her collection. We usually talk about the summary. But I think specifically for Paddington, I don't think any summary was ever going to be good enough unless it was actually written by the writer itself because I just don't think it even gets close to getting the heart of this film. And it's one of those ones where here it does tell us what the plot is, but it really yeah. does miss a lot of the heart of the film. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those summaries where if I had just read the summary and hadn't actually known what the film was about, sort of heart and morale wise I probably yeah. would have been less excited to watch it because I'm just like oh it's a, it's a bear and it's, the, they want to stuff the bear okay. it really you does know? like yeah in the summary it really does come across like it's just wanting to hit story beats mm -hmm. really and that's that's a real shame because genuinely this film is one of the best films to have been released in the past decade honestly. Were you trying and to figure out where it came out for a hot second there? No, no, I was just giving, like, a pause for emphasis. For emphasis. Emphasis. But, yeah, any, anyhow, this film is genuinely so pleasantly enjoyable to watch, even though it is predominantly a film for children. I think it, it still has... It is a has... really, really lovely film. Now, this yeah. is actually the first time I'd seen this movie. Not for lack of wanting to see it. I just missed it when it was in cinemas, and I, then yeah. never got around to watching it, really. I so, have watched this film multiple times. I am quite aware of the love of this is... film, William. Mm. Oh, gosh. You make me giggle. Sorry, I did interrupt you. Please go ahead. I don't even remember what I was saying. Oh, uh, right. Anyway, just kind of going on to what the point of this film is. I don't think I don't think it's very easy to make a film like this because it manages to do so much with its story and with the little tiny details to the point where the aspect that there is an a absolutely amazing looking CG bear throughout the entirety of this film and it's the focus of this film that becomes such a minor point to the rest of the film in that. It is so well written and then it is also just so well acted and the design is perfect to the point where it doesn't matter if this is a film made for kids, it's still incredibly enjoyable for everyone. You know, not that I've seen Christopher Robin either, but this movie really makes me think of Christopher Robin in the way that they're both films surrounding beloved childhood bears. Yeah. And they seem to both have done really, really well at the box office. So there really is something to say about sticking to the heart and the feelings of childhood that yeah. come with little bears, whether they be there real is. or stuff. Yeah, I definitely think that there is a... I don't want to say market, because that almost feels too shallow of a point to say, but I do really feel like there is a great value in managing to depict the spirit and the heart of that childhood like nostalgia that actually works so so well and if you actually put the effort into capturing that in a genuine and honest way then you can make something absolutely heartbreakingly good mm -hmm. and there's something to say about hitting that fine line between realism and accuracy with these characters because of course yeah Paddington is a well-standing character. He's been around for a very long time. Yes. An so long to time. make something that doesn't just look like Paddington, but also realistically fits in with the surroundings of the film and mm. to have such good CGI work really is astounding. I cannot get over the way that Paddington looks. Yeah, and I think that's a perfect place to kind of start with our more general points, is that Paddington looks fucking incredible as, as a CG bear and, and also something you really need to consider is this film came out in 2014 and the I CG... What'd you say? Isn't it a 2015 movie? No, it came out in 2014. Oh. 
And, Gosh. But the thing is, he's, Paddington still looks generally real in this he movie. He does. Him and, and his un- aunt and uncle, they all look incredibly real. realistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think but this all, is something yeah. that I've said before about CGI, but this really is a point in the column of stylized over completely realistic. Because, yes, he looks like a realistic bear, but he still manages to look fluffy and yeah. cute. And almost yeah, there is still this yeah. There's this definite sweetness to his appearance that does help us believe it more and more. I think my favorite point in the favor of the CGI is, without spoiling too too much, there is a scene where Paddington and a real dog are in the picture, and Paddington looks more real than the dog. Than the dog, yeah, yeah. No, you did bring that up, and it is a really good point. I think what's genuinely amazing is that Paddington goes through multiple different phases in this film. He's not just He's not just consistently as he is. He gets soaked in water and then is like dried and ends up being fluffy and the fur always matches and assimilates to what's going on and that has to be incredibly difficult to make look real but they manage it every single time. So then Paddington never looks unrealistic whether or not he's drenched in water or has just been towel dried or blow dried and as a result it's just so believable that this bear actually exists within the space mm-hmm. he's almost exactly in, especially in that scene where he gets wet and then dried mm. his fur almost exactly mimics what you would see from a dog if you watched a dog and then blow dried them like that and it truly just does add to the weight of the character now when i say weight i do mean his weight in the film as a whole and the fact that he feels so realistic Mm. rather than of course the actual measurement weight of the bear yeah and what I think is really kind of impressive is that they've done so well with the actual design of Paddington and admittedly his his aunt and uncle as well, that even though he looks real and realistic within the space, they've also given him enough expressiveness within his face and his eyes that you can actually understand the emotions he's feeling, even if they're subtle, which is which feels like such an incredibly hard thing to do it's almost for, for a exactly, character that doesn't exist. Mm-hmm, it's almost exactly the type of CGI that I really wish had come across in the live-action version of The Lion King. Yeah. This semi-realistic but still emoting expression on what is supposed to be a live animal. They really did capture not just the weight of the character, but also the expressions and the heart of the character. If they had gone much more realistic with the CGI, not only would it have probably aged a lot more than it has, it also would have it would have lost taken something. away from the mm-hmm. sweetness of Paddington as a whole. Yeah. He's such a kind-hearted little bear that... Oh yeah, he's wonderful. And it's so wonderful to see a film where the main character doesn't have to have to become jaded if they are kind. Or, he, or it, it's so genuinely wonderful to have a film where kindness and compassion isn't passed off as naivete. And it's in fact one of the reasons that Paddington gets to where he does it's yeah. just because he is kind and courteous and helpful and he wants to be helpful yeah which in turn helps him create the bonds that he does throughout the movie not to say too too much there yeah no but truly there's not a lot that i can fault with this movie oh, there God, are no. things that i will talk about in the in depth but a lot of mm. them I've already come to accept and don't really see his faults anymore. They're just things that I do want to point out for the sake of it. Of course, I have and critiques as well. Yeah, exactly. For anybody who is wondering, I believe in one of the first podcasts that we did, I mentioned how we were going to talk about in your pointless research things like the amount of stitches that Paddington has. Oh, right, yeah. And you went, Paddington Paddington's is a, a real, real bear. bear. Yeah. I'd never seen the movie, and so I genuinely thought that Paddington was more of a Winnie the Pooh character than he was a real yeah. bear. No, no, he, he's... Can I say how yeah. delighted I was to be proved wrong? <laughs> yeah, which is really wonderful because he actually has a backstory that isn't steeped in magic, but almost biology where his race of bear the spectacled bear if you wanted to know has the potential to speak english and also assimilate the culture of the british explorer 
that finds them, as opposed to being a bear that's brought to life because someone believe his owner believes in him. And I think that genuinely adds to the wonderfulness of Paddington because he is a character who has his own motivations and isn't created because of somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I think that's yeah. what's really amazing about making his character almost a little more active within a, a typical a uh, uh, hero archetype. But his purpose is so much more wholesome than the usual hero's journey in that it's he just wants to find a place to belong. Yeah, and I do truly love the story arc to move us forward a little bit in this review yeah. of the movie Paddington. It flows really, really nicely, and the only times that I disliked where it was flowing was because I was too attached to whatever was happening on the screen, yeah. and I was way too into it. I think I even yelled at you because I was like, stop ruining the experience for me as I'm yeah. lamenting over something that doesn't really matter. I wasn't matter. even talking that much. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, for those of you listening, the dynamic usually with these kinds of films is if I've seen them, then I will talk about them in little parts. But with Paddington, Monique was asking me questions, and then when I was answering them, she was like, Shut up! <laughs> I would ask a Try question. Try watch the film. And you would start answering it, and I would decide that actually, no, I'm way too invested in this film mm. to listen to you. So if you could kindly shut yeah. up and watch it, which is. Just the dynamic that we have in yeah. general. Um, I feel and like, you can really though, tell from my people that it happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, though, though we have talked quite a bit about Paddington as well, trying to keep things on task. We love Paddington to bits. He's a very easy character to become attached to because one, he's super fucking cute. Two, he's just genuinely so sweet and lovable. Also, a big uh, amount of praise to Ben Wishaw who voices Paddington. If you don't know him, he played Q in the latest Bond films and other things like that. He was also a serial killer in Perfume, A Story of a Killer, but he's great. He has such a good voice for Paddington that he comes across. He always comes across as gentle, even in points where he is scolding other characters or even more active within dialogue. He always comes across as very gentle and compassionate within his mannerisms and dialect, and it's fucking incredible. It's so wholesome. But, yeah, but to extend the praise to the rest of the cast as well, I think that all of the Browns definitely have a really amazing dynamic where none of them actually come across as weaker characters than any of the others. They're all written so beautifully well that... And if you truly think about it, there's another level to their acting because yeah. really Paddington isn't actually there. He is completely CGI. I don't know if they had like a little model or something. I but think even... uh, for, for Paddington I think they had a stuffed version of Paddington and then they also had a reflective ball that they moved around for the CG. That's so, yeah. adorable. But he's not real. He's not he's there. Not real, yeah. And a lot of his lines would have been things that they were only reading or, you know, hearing quickly said to them so they could say their lines back. Yeah. Which, the acting is phenomenal. There's never a point where you feel like any of the characters don't truly believe there's a bear standing next to them. Yeah. The acting in this movie, it's just great. Like, you never think that they're looking in the wrong direction or talking to the wrong person. Yeah. One of the standout characters to me is actually the father. Oh, yeah. So because played um, by Hugh Bonneville. If you've watched any Downton Abbey, you'll know him quite well. But yeah, so go ahead hmm. with what you have to say. Just because of the acting that he has and the hijinks that he goes through, yeah. he truly was a standout character for me. Yeah, absolutely. Which I might talk about a little more in the in-depth, just so we don't get into spoiler territory. But yeah, I truly absolutely. just love them as a whole. Even when they're first introduced in the beginnings of mm. the movie, they immediately all have their own personalities, despite it being, what, like a one, two-minute scene? Yeah, exactly. And you get you get an inkling to their characters through one conversation that they have passing by Paddington. And I think that's a really incredible thing to do, to be able to depict an entire family as being all being in depth through one conversation, in which they're all in, be involved and they actually all have a piece to say. But you can immediately from the get-go get an idea of the depth of their humanness in it, and yeah. it's really, really good. And it's, like, to broaden the horizon there just a bit, it 
goes for a lot of the characters and even side characters. There are certain side characters who actually have a great deal of depth despite some of which having no lines and some of which having maybe one or two. And, and it really is amazing how crafted all of the characters were, for lack of a better yeah. word. Yeah, and I, and I wouldn't even, like, I wouldn't say, like, planned or designed. I would say handcrafted, almost, to use a term, because they all have this loving uniqueness to them that makes them great. And I would even extend that to the antagonists. I don't even think, well, one of them you can definitely call a villain, but antagonists definitely because they even have a great deal of depth and they have their own reasons to dislike Paddington despite not actually even having a real conversation with Paddington or actually even getting to know him. And it's really great because you don't expect a children's film to be written this well. No, you really don't. And, and there I, isn't well, a better way to describe watching this movie yeah. than being wrapped in a warm heart hug almost it feels like yeah, getting no, absolutely we're australian so this yeah. isn't really something we do but it feels like that sort of quintessential fall pumpkin pie vibes like what well, yeah. i feel like being able to smell a pumpkin pie coming out of the oven would feel and experience as it's just yeah. such a warm film i don't know it's so feel good and even the humor in this film is very standalone you don't oh, yeah, need it, to know a lot of context for yeah, the it humor feels very and it doesn't generalizable rag on anything yeah yeah and yeah it's it's never necessarily deprecating humor it can be self-deprecating at times but it's also self-aware to the point where it's still very funny to watch as an australian or i assume as an american if you don't necessarily get the british humor you can still get the british kind of stereotypical nature of it and it comes across as incredibly funny and the mm -hmm. humor in this is done really well and i was going to just jump back to a point that i said that you don't expect a children's film a kid's film to be this well written and i don't want to critique other children's films by saying that i mean specifically and this is a kid's film and it, you could almost let it get away with a little bit of stuff that is fair enough for the purposes of the plot or for making jokes within the film and things like that and you give it a little bit Bit of leeway because it's a, a film made for kids but this film pushes that point to the extreme where it will continue to remain loyal to filmmaking techniques and story writing rules and guidelines to make a genuinely amazing film that can be what that can of course be watched by everyone a hundred percent and i just really do truly enjoy this film in a way that I haven't with a children's film for a mm. very long time. It's very well put together. There's not a lot of holes that you can poke in the story. Yeah. The overall morale is done really well. And something that I actually want to talk about because this film, which means that there are always going to be parts of exposition. Yeah. The exposition in this film is done incredibly well. Yeah, it's it stylized. It doesn't feel stilted. It isn't out of place. It doesn't take you out of the experience at all. If anything, it almost endears you towards the characters. Yeah, more. it's it's so cleverly done because it's it's done in ways where it's either Paddington writing a letter or an explanation for the sake of building character that we don't have yet. And it's all done in a way that still feels natural and fluid within the world. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's, because ultimately one of my rules and one of filmmaking and screenwriting rules is that uh, narration is definitely a crutch and it's kind of the one point of leeway that I do give this film is that it still uses narration but it doesn't use it as a crutch it, it uses it for points that are just used to almost enhance the story because we get a better understanding of other characters and the narration is they're not narrating is... because they have to otherwise you don't understand what's going on yeah they're using it almost to build character yeah the and narration is never used to push sense of the story time passing yeah almost yeah yeah it, it's never used to push the story forward no only um, ever to push character development or to endear yeah. you towards characters or to let you know about something that you should know about if it wasn't if it wasn't necessarily visually explained just mm -hmm. so that everyone's on the same has the same footing when it comes to this film so we're all on a yeah level yeah. playing field when it comes to understanding what's happening in the plot and, and 
it's really, really refreshing. I think yeah, something that stood out to me the last time we watched a more children's based movie is that there were a few times where they tried to do that sort of exposition where evidently it's a children's movie, so sometimes you do have to give that little bit of extra context. Yeah. It just didn't hit in the same way that Paddington. No, has absolutely hit not. The because like like I said, it the narration is used as a crutch in, in other films that it's just not used as here, in that the narration almost has to prove prop up sections of story and that's what narration is often used for whereas in Paddington it's it's basically sprinkled hundreds and thousands over the story and it without the narration it continues to work and one thing I did want to actually say as we're talking about story is that it almost feels really poignant that we talked about Knives Out last week because Paddington uses Chekhov's gun to either a the same or a greater extent as Knives I Out. I would say the same extent, yeah. but I also haven't seen the movie nearly as much as I have seen Knives Out, so I am almost certain what, that besides the things that you pointed yeah. out to me, I didn't get a lot of those. What I, what I find is that literally, well, not literally, but practically everything that is shown on in frame in Paddington is used later on, whether it be the Dust Buster, the Marmalade Sandwich, just bread or even the hat everything that appears in frame will either have a use later on or have an immediate use and i find that incredible that it's just so consistent with that in that there is only a few examples that i can think of that aren't reused or not used as chekhov's gun or don't have a reuse after them but then but then sections just continuously have uses and it uses Chekhov's gun in a way that would be used in a real world setting in which our main protagonist is constantly learning so the things that they're learning about become useful all the way through yeah and I really like that of a children's film that especially Paddington really is almost a perfect character for a child because yeah. he doesn't understand everything about social niceties or specific yeah. uh, social norms. You know, yeah, social norms, thank you. But as soon as he does sort of figure something out, he tries his best to emulate it. Yeah, and, and integrate it. And integrate it. And the film does a really good... It really does this well. The film yeah. really takes this on board that children are always learning and yeah. they're always implementing new things not always to success e.g the bathroom scene which i think mm. will possibly always upset me just a, a little yeah but he's they're trying their best and what i really love about paddington is he's not treated as a child he's no. treated as a, a human guest. almost like a yeah a tiny yeah. little person who doesn't know social norms and just yeah. has to be taught, which really is how you should approach children anyway. Yeah, sure, absolutely. And I think as a result, it allows Paddington to learn in a far easier manner because of it. And it's just genuinely good writing that Paddington is given the freedom to learn and make mistakes. And he's not necessarily punished for his mistakes. He is confronted or reprimanded for them but he's never yeah, sometimes out- there are consequences to yeah. his action but they're never to punish him as a character they're always just yeah. what would naturally have happened in that moment yeah. it's never like well you did this even though you didn't know that you shouldn't have so yeah. and as a result he can intentionally and naturally grow as a character through them as opposed mm-hmm. to being forced to grow and- this movie truly yeah. feels nostalgic even though yeah. it's not a movie that i grew, grew up with of course it came out in 2015 2014 oh my gosh i will always get that wrong 2014 is when it came out yes but it feels like a childhood movie i almost have yeah, the same fair. nostalgic feelings for paddington that i do for say spirited away which we've also talked about before yes yeah that is a very fair assessment of it. I have watched this multiple times every single time I enjoy it, either just as much if not more. It's not necessarily a film that you watch twice to get the most out of. I think it's a film that you watch whenever you're feeling a little down it and is it always makes you feel movie. better. Yeah, it's it's one of these films that is just there to make you feel good and it does that because it's ultimately just a perfectly wholesome film. Did I, you just say bear to make you feel good? No, I said there. But in- oh, interesting, I totally misheard you. <laughs> interesting use of a pun. But yeah, I think 
with that said, should we get on to like our final thoughts? Do we have any final thoughts? I definitely I do. But do yeah, I do have I a couple final first. thoughts. Just of course that the CGI is astounding. It's yeah. aged so well. Nothing will ever be funnier to me out of all of the jokes in this movie than in those first introductory minutes where yeah. we're shown this incredibly high tech marmalade making oh, machine right, yeah. in the middle of the Perusian jungle. Yeah, Peruvian. <laughs> Peruvian, thank you. I am so bad at geography. But this film is one where I know there's a sequel and despite the fact that you've told me that the sequel, things about the sequel that make me a bit worried, I'm still incredibly excited to watch it. Oh yeah, no, so that is very fair. The sequel is very highly rated and very well loved. The things I have said about it, I don't think they should make you worried. I think you should definitely be very <laughs> excited for it because it is. it all comes from a place of genuine goodness. Oh yeah, I'm still very excited to yeah, watch yeah. it. You kind of like messing with me, and uh, I'm not entirely sure if you are. In oh this moment. right, because my point that so if any of you have seen Paddington one but not Paddington two, what I told Monique who hasn't seen either except for Paddington now is that <laughs> with Paddington two, I could tell you the synopsis for Paddington two and you would not believe me. You'd be like, yeah, fucking bullshit. That's not how Paddington two is supposed to go. That's not a natural sequel. And then I go. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. That's exactly the sequel. And it's I great. Know. People and love it. And I think it. the part that really gets me is that he says that, and then yeah. every time I bring up the sequel, he goes, oh, I cried in the sequel. And I'm like, I'm worried. I every single and time I, I watch it. I've watched, for my safety. I've watched Paddington 2 three times. Every single time I have cried watching it. We will get around to reviewing it at some point, but I just wanted to say my final points are just that the color palette is exceptionally vibrant as well, and much of the production design had a singular intention of making sure that everything had color, from the walls of the houses to even the characters' clothes, and what I find really, really commendable is that even the duller characters, even maybe even Mr. Brown, when he's on his more safety-conscious areas, None of the duller characters are depicted in grey or monotone. They still have a, a vibrant colour palette, but it is more beige focused than it is bright blues and reds. And I find that incredible because they didn't have to force colour uh, theory onto characters to give their characters depth. And mm -hmm. I think that is just a monument to both the costume design and uh, set design, as well as the writing. Uh, and also just wanted to quickly talk about the music because there is a consistent band playing throughout the whole of Paddington. And it is just so wonderful because it's such a nice thing that it's so, this film is so self-aware and never takes itself seriously enough that it has a live band playing and the music in the that the band is playing is specifically for the movie but Paddington and the Browns all just pass it by as if it's just the most normal thing in the world which is also a, a it thing. is really really fun it's a lot of fun but it's also a thing or a theme with this film in that no one ever necessarily goes out of their way or makes a big show of recognizing that Paddington is a bear in London they're just like a bear it's a bear in London cool and they're oh. only suspicious of him when he's like a police bear or whatever mm -hmm. I think my favorite one about that is He's about yay tall. He's wearing this. He's got his signature yeah. red hat. Oh, and he's a, and bear. He's a bear. Well, that doesn't that really doesn't... narrow it down. <laughs> yeah, that's not a lot to go on. And it's such a funny joke because it just is so <laughs> weird and random. But with all that said, what would we give it on a rating scale, Monique? On a rating scale? We didn't choose a thing. <laughs> How about marmalade sandwiches? that's probably a good one to I go. I think that's quite appropriate. On a rating scale, I would give Paddington a 9 out of 10 marmalade sandwiches. It's a stunning film. The CGI is visually impeccable. It's so colourful and vibrant, and the whole movie is aged really brilliantly. It does have a couple nitpicks for me, but they're ultimately inconsequential in the grand scheme of the movie and the plot. So That is a very fair, that is a very fair review. 
I think. And what about you, William? What would you rate Paddington? For me, I think genuinely, when it comes to films like these, the imperfections and the little things that you can nitpick about it, just like with our review of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, they don't ruin the film at all in any single sense of the word. But with Paddington, I don't think that its imperfections impeded at all. So for me, I did actually give it a 10 out of 10 marmalade sandwiches. So first time I've given a fully perfect score, and I know that a lot of people in my film degree would be shocked to hear that. I think this film is wildly beautiful from storyline to character design, and how can I fault I... something that works so hard to remain loyal to filmmaking rules while also providing so much more in terms of laughs and emotional substance? I do just want to mention that it is incredibly funny after last week when I gave my first 10 out of 10, yeah. that this week you've given your first 10 out of 10 after your whole thing of, and even if there was a movie that I thought was perfect and deserved a 10 out of 10 rating, I would give it 6 out of 10 for being pandering. Well, no, like, I, correction, I said if a film was made specifically for me, I would give oh. it a 5 out of 10 for pandering. Anyway, this my is, point still stands. Paddington <laughs> is, is not a film specifically made for me, it was a film specifically specifically made for the love of making a beautiful adaptation and it does it perfectly because it actually wanted to make a film well and it deserves that 10 out of 10 because I think it's just perfect and ultimately because you know that I've cried watching Paddington 2 I'd say expect a similar score when we review that. Spoilers for when we review that which will probably be a little bit down the line but... Get ready for me to pull the rug out from under everyone when I give it like a 1. (laughs) <laughs> you keep making that joke, but I don't I keep, think you'd actually do it. Ma- it's not a joke, it's a threat, to be fair. The bold of you to assume that I see anything you do as a threat. That is fair. Anyway, with that being said, of course, if you would like to follow us outside of the podcast, you can find us at various social medias. I am Nexatai on both Instagram and Twitter, and Will is Grey Mouse Inc. on Twitter and Will underscore Mortlock on Instagram. Will is much more active on Instagram, and I am much more active on Twitter. Please do come and interact with us. Of course, in our in-depth, we always give the hint for whatever our next movie is going to be, and every week I do a bit of a hint refresh on Twitter where you can come over and reply with your guesses, have a bit of interaction with us. We really would love to hear from you. And, of course, give us a like on the podcast. Let us know what you think. We're always happy for feedback. But I think that'll do it for our review this week. Yeah, and, of course, if you want to tune into our in-depth This Week's Pointless Research, we're looking at the history of Paddington Bear. And I promise you all that it will melt your heart. I think my heart has already been sufficiently melted, but I am get ready to be more melted. (laughs) <laughs> it's gonna be a, With your that heart is going to be a fucking puddle by the end of it. Oh gosh, I'm just going to be a tiny little ball of emotions by the end of this <laughs> podcast, I'm sure of it. With that being said, thank you everybody for listening and we'll see you all in the in-depth. Bye.